They want Nike to create content around soccer and basketball and football, right? So the same goes with you creating content that you're an expert on. They want you to tie in your own personal experiences, what you're, what they should avoid, stuff, storytelling, things that no one else is talking about. In essence, they don't want you to write the same thing that 10 other people wrote. They want you to write something new and unique. A very important question for all the people watching us right now is about the tools. Is about the tools. Like yeah. If you could give us some three to five recommended uh, tools for uh, developing the SEO part of uh, the business, what could they be? So number one is going to be Google Analytics. It's from a free tool from Google. It tells you not just what keywords you're getting traffic from, mm -hmm. but it tells you which ones drive revenue. Mm. Just because you rank for a keyword doesn't mean it's going to make you any money. If you rank number one for a keyword and you make zero dollars, who cares? It's useless mm -hmm. traffic. The second tool is answer the public. Remember how you talked about these long tails, like how to pick the right stock to invest in when you're starting off. It will tell you all those long tail keywords that people are typing in. Mm -hmm. The third tool is Google Search Console. If you want to rank in SEO, it tells you what errors there are on your web page and how Google's crawling your page and what's wrong and what you need to fix. The fourth tool is VidIQ. VidIQ. If, if you want to do really well in- I use that one a lot. Yeah, VidIQ and TubeBuddy, they're both good. Um, if you want to do really well in YouTube, it's a tool that you have to end up checking out. Um, and then the last one that I would check out is Google Data Studio. See, if you're going to do SEO, you want to do paid advertising, you want to do email marketing, you want to do social media marketing, you want to leverage all the channels. Google Data Studio will take the data from all those places and you can put it into one dashboard so you can see all your data in one place. Let me ask you something. It's a, a particular question here. Um, when I produce uh, videos for YouTube yeah. and I want to rent them organic, um, I've seen a lot of companies making good videos and then they uh, pay traffic for this video. And in my point of view, when you do that, you kind of like mess everything about the algorithm here and something happens, and then this video stops uh, showing to the audience. A good organic video, when we pay traffic, it just stops showing after we stop using traffic. Uh, I have a lot of theories about this, but do you recommend using traffic to a video you want to rank? Is there anything related? No, I, I don't recommend paying for the traffic. Mm -hmm. um, Google clearly tells you that if you pay for traffic, it doesn't help or hurt your rankings. Mm -hmm. It's separate. But the issue is, is when you pay, you get all these views and engagement and then you stop paying and it goes away mm -hmm. and it can send negative signals. Yes. Yes. Uh, imagine we are starting right now to use SEO in my company. Okay. Like, and I hire something someone okay to to do it for me working in my company what could be like the beginners beginner's guide for this one person to start developing an seo uh, area in my company sure so the easiest way to do is we have a guide called seo made simple a step-by-step -step guide and it's in portuguese and in english Mm -hmm. and it tells you what to do step one, step two, step three. Mm -hmm. But you're actually, the easiest way to get started is we have a tool that's in Portuguese called Uber Suggest. Mm -hmm. You can add your website, and it'll crawl all your pages, tell you what's wrong. It tells you how to fix it, and it'll even prioritize what to fix first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so forth that'll get you the best rankings. Wow. Wow. And so... so this person could use this tool yeah. to like improve my website. Yep. And what should be a routine for someone working with SEO? They should be checking every day for 
any errors and fixing okay. up. They should continue to publish new content each and every single day. They should try to build links each and every single try to day. Mm -hmm. They should try to get more social shares each and every single day. Mm -hmm. But those are the main things that someone would focus on. Okay. And are there any mistakes that everybody makes when they are like trying to rank a page or working with SEO? There's not one mistake we see people make, but there is one that is very common, which is people create crap content and they expect to rank well. The reason you do well on YouTube is because your content is good. If your content sucked, no matter how much marketing you do, over time your rankings and your views wouldn't be good. Mm -hmm. You need to really go out there and create amazing content and people just forget that. Instead, they create the same stuff that everyone else creates and they regurgitate the same information instead mm -hmm. of creating something new. Yeah, but you're telling about a good content and what, what exactly is a good content? I mean, It's, so, it's personal or is it like... Yeah, no, no, the, you're right. To some extent, it's personal, but imagine you searching for something. Uh -huh. You got this problem, okay? Like how to pick the right stock when you're starting off or which trading platform should I buy my stocks in? Your content should answer the question so thoroughly that the person knows what to do next. That's the first step. The second step is... The content needs to be easily digestible. So can someone quickly read it, listen to it, watch it, and understand the main points? Mm -hmm. The third is it needs to have personal experiences. So with SEO, Google and their algorithm has something called EAT. EAT stands for expertise, authority, and trust. They want people to create content that they're experts on. They don't want Nike to create content on investing. They want Nike to create content around soccer and basketball mm -hmm. and football, right? So the same goes with you creating content that you're an expert on. They want you to tie in your own personal experiences, what, you're, what they should avoid, stuff, storytelling, things that no one else is talking about. In essence, they don't want you to write the same thing that 10 other people wrote. They want you to write something new and unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you... um. You are 37 and like you have 800 employees. You you operate in you operate in like the whole globe. You have uh, people working in India, right? Yeah, we do a lot of work for companies in India. Like, uh, have you heard of like PwC? Yes. PwC, ESPN. Do you guys have ESPN here in yes, Brazil? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So ESPN. we do a lot of marketing for like even in Brazil. We have a uh, CNN. They're trying to make a big yes, push in yes. Brazil, so we're now doing their marketing in uh, Brazil. Cool. Very cool. And you have Brazil. You have United States. Uh, like, where are you going to from a personal perspective? I mean, you've reached a lot of success. Uh, especially corporate success, uh, money, uh, you're famous in your niche, and you're traveling uh, to other countries. I mean, what? where are you going to? Where are you headed? So we'll continually to expand globally. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to take the company public. We were the 21st fastest growing company in the United States two years ago. But why don't you want to do it? I don't want the headache. I don't have investors. Okay. So I'd rather stay private. We make good money. I don't care for the headache. I've already made good money in my past, so I don't need more. Um, we're continually buying up a lot of companies. We want to do two, three acquisitions next year. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I want to do is I think eventually we'll have a company that has five, 10,000 employees um, as we get into more countries. But my big personal goal is to give back more mm -hmm. like the money is not that more meaningful i make more money would i have another bigger home i already have a house in vegas that's expensive my house in vegas i think is 18 million dollars my house in beverly hills once i'm fully done building it is around 20 million so that's 38 million dollars in real estate how many more homes do i need right um how many more cars do i need you know My big thing that I want to do, I have children. One's a one-year-old, one's three years old. We want to give all our money and show our children that there's more to money than just keeping it for yourself. Why not use it to help people throughout all the world? 
you know, I've been to Brazil, I've been to like favelas, you know, so many kids are struggling. Why not help them out and give them a better life? Why not give people better lives in America, India, UK, everywhere around the world? Why not try to use the money to try to solve diseases and problems instead of just giving my kids money and having them be lazy and doing nothing? Did you have this point of view when you didn't have money? Or is it something no. that when you I had, discovered? When I had no money, I all I wanted to do was become rich. And I remember when I had no money, my first goal was I wanted to be a millionaire. Then I wanted to be a 10 millionaire. Then I wanted to be a hundred millionaire, then billionaire. But it doesn't stop. That's the thing. What point does enough, you're not going to use the money. You know, it's mm. funny. I was talking to my wife. During COVID, I started flying on private planes. So instead of going to the airport and flying commercial, I would be in the plane all by myself. And sometimes we'd get really big planes that can fit 18, 20 people, right? Usually not 20, but 17, 18 people, the max, um, somewhere around there. And I was spending all this money and there was, it was never ending. What do I buy next? Yachts, big boats? I don't need any of that. And then my wife and I came to the realization is we're happier when we actually help other people. Instead of me spending $100,000 or call it, it, I came from uh, Las Vegas to Sao Paulo. If I flew private, it would cost me maybe $200,000, $250,000. So maybe a million uh, reais. That's a lot of money. And instead of spending it on a plane to go back and forth, I'll go to the airport. I'll sit in a normal plane. And I rather donate the money because when I see other kids living better lives, it makes me happy. But it, I didn't get there until I started to make money and I have it. And I'm not rich like Elon Musk or Bill Gates. That's a whole new level. I don't have that kind of money. But I have enough where I don't have to worry. My wife doesn't have to worry. My kids don't have to worry. Um, and we just found that we're happier helping other people. Mm -hmm. And that's very beautiful to hear. And you talk a lot about helping children in India, here in Brazil. And it makes me think, like, how was your childhood? It was hard or? No, my childhood was pretty good. My parents didn't have money. Mm -hmm. We grew up in uh, housing that was uh, for people who don't have much money. But my family helped us out. So my my mom's brothers helped us. My dad's uh, family brothers and sisters helped him. So my parents had help from their siblings. Mm -hmm. So my upbringing wasn't bad. I grew up middle class. And I was really happy, but I wanted to be rich. Mm -hmm. And I never really realized that when you have more money, you keep buying things. And it doesn't make you happy. I remember I went to the store, bought a watch for maybe five, six hundred thousand reais. That's a lot of money for one watch happy for one day and then i was like oh, it's just a watch i don't even wear it i haven't worn it for maybe three four years but then when i help some kid who's who you know needs eye surgery or doesn't have clothes to go to school you change their lives that makes me happy not for one day it makes me happy for life you just got to keep doing it i look at that as investing i'm investing in the future of planet earth wow And you, do you have faith in something bigger? Uh, I, I don't know if I really have. I have faith in mankind. That's probably the best way to put it. And what I mean by that is I believe people can do so much to help more people out. You just have to give more people opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what my wife and I have learned is when we help more people and they start doing better, Then, because they realize how much better their life was because other people helped them, then they start helping others as well when they grow older. Mm -hmm. And it creates this big chain, and hopefully more and more people help each other out. Okay. Okay. You do have, like, a... First of all, congratulations on, on this thinking. I think uh, a lot of people should uh, be happier if they discovered how good and satisfying it is to help others, especially when you can help a, a kid, a child. And I, I was uh, very helped by a lot of people. And I, I think uh, what explains the small success I had uh, is more related to the things I don't control 
than the things I do control. Uh, but the things I do control, I work a lot. Yep. And, the, and the things I don't control, I think a lot of people help me out. And then I try to help others, especially entrepreneurs, because I think it's like a chain of people helping others. And it's very good for the economy, the health, the family, and the country, and the world, the planet, as you said. And before we finish here, uh, Neil, do you have like a final conclusion, hint, tip, suggestion, or something that you would leave us to help, especially on the business part of it, on how to operate a business, how to make a better SEO, how to acquire more clients, make better acquisitions with lower costs, acquisitions. Do you have like a final, final conclusion? Yes, I'm going to give you three things for the finale. Okay. okay. Number one is no one has all the answers. So in business, it doesn't matter if you've done it 10 times or for your first time, everyone's going to make mistakes. But if you avoid making the same mistake over and over again, at the end, you'll be left with the stuff you should be doing. The second thing is hire amazing people, invest in talent, invest in good labor and pay them the money they need to be successful so that way they give it all in your company. And when I say pay for good talent, when you're hiring an employee, don't just try to hire people who are the cheapest. Hire people who are already successful in this space and have solved the problems that you're trying to solve. Okay. And the third thing is with marketing, if you want to get a lot of traffic, experiment. There's algorithms. YouTube has an algorithm. TikTok has an algorithm. Google has an algorithm. Everyone does. Their algorithms constantly change. YouTube's algorithm from what it was six, seven years ago is different than what it is today. Try to run a marketing experiment once a week so you can learn what works and what doesn't. At my ad agency, NP Digital, we're running experiments for our clients at least once a week and we're learning from it. But what's interesting is we'll run experiments with our Brazilian clients, our clients in America, our clients in the UK, India, and so forth and so on. So you can see all these patterns and figure out what works. And then you apply it to businesses throughout all the world. So that way you can grow your traffic faster. It doesn't matter how, how long you've been doing marketing for, because algorithms change so often, the best way to do improve and get more traffic is to run at least one new marketing experiment a week. That could be try to create a new form of content, maybe try a new social channel, try to do use infographics to get links or try to uh, start a podcast because it's not that competitive, right? There's a lot of people want to listen to podcasts, but not that many people who create them yet. Yes. Wow. Very, very good uh, finale you just gave us, Neil. And Neil, for uh, the people willing to get to know you better and know your company better, like, do you have any uh, social media uh, to leave the audience to follow you and maybe learn more from you yeah they can always go to uh neil patel on social media okay. uh, we also have the social handles uh np digital so n is in neil p is in patel and then digital okay. and we also have them all in different languages including portuguese wow so do you have like an instagram linkedin and all these social media in different yes. languages yes in different languages yes. so you produce content in portuguese and you also have a english an english account Yes, and okay. same with other languages. Okay. And you, we usually uh, leave a, a gift for our audience. We call them the cousins. It's primos and primas. Do you have like a book you can sign for us or something? Uh, I don't have a book here. But you have a book, right? Yes, I have a book. Can you send us one signed book for, for gifting? Yes, I can do it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so I'll talk to the Brazilian audience right now to tell them the specifics and make the the conclusion here. But Neil, thank you so much. Like talking to you today, it's an honor. Uh, I got to know you maybe, I don't know, seven years ago, eight years ago, I'm not sure. And I never imagined I would talk to you. So it's very important for me. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you for having me and you've had an amazing career and I know the next five years will be even better for you.